In most videos, it takes me about a billion years to get to the really cool stuff. Let's not do that today. We're firing Sprite's afterburner in five, four, three, two, one. This is the startup sequence and here we go. Hey everyone, my name's Joe Barnard. Hope you enjoyed starting with a little bit of fire there. Figured that was appropriate as this video is about the afterburner on Sprite. This is the hopper slash lander vehicle that I've been developing for a little while now. We are getting very close to a flight and I wanted to talk a little bit about the butane afterburner that goes after the EDF that powers this whole thing. Before we get started, I need to give a big shout out to our sponsor today, Sprite, for holding the microphone. Thank you so much, little buddy. Uh, so let's talk about this. Sprite is primarily powered by an EDF, or an electric ducted fan. And this is a big fan that goes in the center of the craft. Uh, I'll show a couple of clips of it here, but it goes in the center of the craft and that is what is producing almost all of our thrust. The vehicle weighs roughly 3.7, somewhere between 3.7 and four kilograms, and this massive 104 uh, millimeter diameter EDF is providing most of that thrust, but, this is a rocketry channel. I really like fire. That's kind of my thing. So there's a tank of butane on the back of this. It's just regular old lighter fluid um, that is compressed. It's sort of in an aerosol can. The butane is its own propellant that squirts out. It goes below the EDF. And when you light it, you can create a sort of flame effect as if you're burning a liquid propellant engine or as if you're burning an actual rocket motor or if you, as if you had like a jet with an afterburner on it. Now, it's none of those things. It doesn't produce any appreciable amount of thrust. It's mostly just for looks. Um, but I don't know, man, it's YouTube. Like half of this stuff that's on this whole platform is just for views. As you can see, not only does it produce an awesome flame, it's also an incredible noise once this propellant is burning. So last night I ran a ton of ignition tests on the afterburner and we're gonna walk through some of that footage now. I did live stream it for the patrons of BPS.space. You can support the project down in the description below. Okay, let's get started. Let's look at this footage. The first thing you'll see in this footage is that when the butane starts flowing, I let it actually flow for about a second. Uh, and get started before I hit that ignition sequence. So the butane is coming out for a little bit, um, and that's just to ensure we have some butane in the line and there's some forward motion in the flow. In all of these tests, there's a certain sequence that happens every time. For about a second before each test, the butane starts flowing in, and you can see that when there's a little bit of liquid and a little bit of smoke coming out of a sort of nozzle shape in the middle of the fan. After that, a little bit of circuitry that I ripped out from a taser creates an arc and that starts the flame. For all of these tests, I let the flame burn for about one second before I throttled up to roughly 40% on the primary primary fan. All right, so all of this is still in development, right? We haven't flown the craft, none of it is perfected yet. So I have not been able to get past about 40% on the fan. That is 40% thrust, and that equates to something around like one, maybe 1 1.5 kilograms. That's not gonna be enough. We need to lift this craft, it's about 3.7 kilograms. So uh, I have about 30 ideas uh, for how to fix this, and uh, I'm looking for ideas in the comments down below, but right now it seems like we just don't have a large enough low pressure zone to keep a sustained, uh, rather a sustained ignition uh, when the fan gets moving fast enough, we're sort of like sucking out all of that air from the low pressure zone. So there will probably be more updates to come, but just as a heads up, this is not full thrust and we can't actually get to full thrust yet. 
Um, but we should be able to get there. I have faith. So once we throttle up, even though we do have sustained combustion, one of the things you will notice here is that the flame is sort of off to one side. From my angle, it's off to the right a little bit. And that indicates to me that we're either, uh, we have something impinging the flame path, which we do have those igniter leads in there. Those are the leads that actually create the arc that start the flame, or we're just dumping too much, too much propellant on that side. Um, of the afterburner and that both of those things are very easy fixes going in a little bit closer here We've got a great view of the afterburner close up. I got the camera nice and close there You can see the butane come out of this sort of nozzle shape low pressure zone generator uh, And then once we get that ignition you can see this beautiful flame come out of there Obviously none of this is very stable again. I can't emphasize enough how uh, imperfect this whole system is right now um, but you also get a good view of uh, these TVC veins, which are still 3D printed. Uh, I still need to machine them out of aluminum, and that's just something that's coming. So I wanted to get afterburner tests done, and I was willing to sacrifice the veins in the process. You can see that happen pretty clearly here. The other thing that's pretty clear to see in these up-close shots is that all of this stuff is held together primarily by aluminum tape. This is sort of like aircraft tape that you can use for aerospace applications. Um, I'm still not convinced that this is going to hold up. In fact, I think it's not going to hold up in the long term over the course of uh, longer run times. But for the short run times and for keeping things really experimental for the time being, I think it's a great solution. Something that's absolutely worth emphasizing here is safety. We're doing all of these in a garage here, but the garage door is open. The craft is very close to the edge of the garage. Um, when that butane burns, it creates a bunch of fumes that you just don't want to breathe in. Um, and so I'm trying to keep my distance for most of these tests. There is always at least one fire extinguisher nearby. On the patron stream, there were two, um, and we're doing this in essentially an outdoors condition. This right here is an awesome angle. I'm so glad I got this. So you can see the fans spin up right here. We're looking down into the craft, and you can see a little bit of the afterburner and two of those TVC vanes. And then you should be able to see the entire ignition sequence here. So here we go. Should be coming up pretty soon. Looks like that butane is coming out. There it is. So we're getting a view right down the middle of that fan. Now, one thing you will see here is the stators, or these are the sort of uh, non-moving fins in the fan are actually canted at an angle. And this is to reduce the constant torque. Um, we're sort of linear linearizing around a point um, and guessing. Um, I hope this makes sense, but essentially these stators are here to reduce the roll torque, the constant roll torque um, that is created by this fan. So if you're flying this, I mean, these things are really intended for model jets, uh, model planes, things like that. If you're flying, these stators are part of this fan, and this is gonna really reduce the roll torques that you have on your craft so, um, so that you don't have a steady state error when you're flying. Obviously, you can't change the angle of these stators, so the roll torque isn't gonna be the same between 70% and 90%. Um, but these are sort of estimated. I don't know exactly where they linearized about, but um, this is going to help us in our control software so that most of the regular feedback control can take care of that, uh, that regular roll torque um, because these stators are doing a whole lot of the work. And finally, here's the last shot here. We've got another beautiful shot of that butane coming out where uh, we started about 10% thrust and then we throttle up to 40. Uh, this is another good uh, example of the flame sort of curving off to the right there. I do think this is mostly having to do with the amount of butane and how it's distributed in a circle around the middle of the fan there. Um, so as the fan cools down, uh, there's another thing I wanted to mention, which is the amount of thrust generated by this butane afterburner is not yet characterized. I've seen a bunch of different sort of not really well supported claims online for how much thrust you should be getting from one of these like hobby afterburners. So I have a test stand. We have stuff that we can use to measure this and we're gonna do just that. But I figured I'd get a quick update out right now about what the afterburner is doing, um, how it works, and uh, actually we should cover how it works. Hold on one sec. Excuse me Sprite, I need to take this microphone back. I'm so sorry. Okay, so if we go around to the back of the craft here, you'll see we have some lighter fluid and a very janky actuation system. I'm not going to actually uh, press this down, uh, but the way that most of these cans work, you know what, I have an empty can around here somewhere. Hold on. So this is an empty can of butane right here. If I take my Leatherman and we 
uh, depress the valve on this aerosol can. It works like essentially any other aerosol can would. Spray paint, hairspray, whatever else you spray out of aerosol cans. When you press this down, there's a little bit that comes out. I can actually see a little bit of residual butane coming out there, just some fumes. Um, but when you press that down, the butane comes out, and so by using a servo at the top of this can, when we press it down, uh, the butane is gonna flow through this tubing and into the afterburner assembly. On the bottom of the craft is the afterburner. You will notice those, uh, those <laughs> TVC fins that are pretty damaged there. Um, but we've got a couple spirals of brass tubing uh, before we actually dump the butane into the afterburner assembly. The reason for this, and I'll probably have to add a few more spirals and give this two or three more tries before I can get it right, is during this burning process, we want to heat up that butane. When you turn the can upside down, you're only getting liquid butane out. And to have a really efficient burn, I want it to be gaseous by the time it gets out of those outlet ports and gets burned. So if we inject the butane as a liquid and then spiral it through um, a couple times in the flame, the flame is actually sort of a self-sustaining process where we're heating up the butane to become gaseous so that flame can be better. And it's sort of like law of accelerating, ah, it's not really that. The point is that uh, after a few seconds of firing, we should have more stable combustion than we would otherwise. So I think I'm gonna have to revamp, revamp this afterburner a couple of times before we fly. Um, but as I sort of alluded to earlier, this afterburner is not a huge part um, of Sprite other than for pure aesthetics. All of this is to say most of this stuff is only possible, feasible, and makes some amount of sense when you are doing uh, YouTube videos and not trying to serve any actual purpose. There's genuinely no purpose to having this afterburner on here. Other than that, I kind of want to see fire under whatever's flying. So that's it. If you had any respect for me as an engineer before this video, uh, I assume most of that is gone at this point. Uh, but basically we just dump butane out the back of this craft. Uh, hit the gas and get some flame out of that. So that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below. I don't know, man, all the normal YouTube stuff. Uh, if you want to see, support the project, uh, there's a Patreon for it. I do live streams of all of these tests um, and that's been going pretty well. So that's all from me for now. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Joe Barnard. May your skies be blue and your winds be low.